Uh. <laughs> I just want to say, warning, this will be a so crushing episode. <laughs> I'm already being destroyed. <laughs> You've only had your soul mostly destroyed. Mostly! I said already being destroyed. I didn't say it was destroyed completely yet. Mm hmm Anyway, yeah. Hi, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. Uh, it is October 5th, 2019. Uh, this is episode 128. Woo! Uh, and we're going to be talking about a variety of topics today, that uh, some of which crush Joe's soul. Uh, these, The ones that don't include crushing Joe's soul are, of course, the Throne of Eldraine. It's out officially. This is the release week. Last week we did talk about a little bit with their uh, deluxe edition, which sold out. Of course it did. Because... Again, if you have 15,000 copies, there are probably 15,000 collectors with a lot of money to spend worldwide. And 15,000 reasons to say no! <laughs> well, that's going to be coming up a little later. Then we have the uh, Lost uh, Lost Omens character guide. So we talked about the world guide of Lost Omens last week, which they've actually quite quickly come out with these two books, which is actually probably a really good thing, because it's kind of introducing the Galarian world and some characters from it that are more appropriate if you're using directly the Pathfinder world. Uh, there is a Simpsons code names game because Simpsons did it. Oh wait, no, everybody else did it and then Simpsons did it in this case because Simpsons is alive. And then we'll finish up with the worst of them all, I mean the best of them all, the Wendy's RPG. No. <laughs> yes! No. Let's do a more positive topic though to begin with. Let's talk Throne of Train. You feel like positive topics, Joe? <laughs> Some, something uh, to avoid soul crushing for at least a little while. Um, a the bit. soul Eldrain, they in, it started a few new abilities in, which are really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, one is what the hell's the name of it? The the uh adventures the adventures yes because they're the uh they're like a type of i think they're instance or, sor or sorceries yeah. yeah they're instance or sorceries that are also creatures so you can cast it as the instant of sorcery then it gets um put in bleh, i can speak today put in exile it gets removed from, yeah it gets exiled and then you can cast it as a creature from exile, or you could just cast it as a creature if that's more appropriate for what you need to do. Right, but um, they vary in ability, but they're all really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing with around with it on uh, Magic Arena, so I have enjoyed those. Mm -hmm. And then there's also food tokens, which they on themselves are to sacrifice it to gain three life. They're an artifact that. Things create or things use, it seems like. Yeah. Um, nice, easy way to get three life. Mm -hmm. or, or feed to other creatures. That might use food tokens. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think... I don't know if adamant was a keyword before, and that seems to be a newer one that's here now. Which... No, I think that might be new to which is a special ability for creatures. I think it varies though, doesn't it or not? It basically says oh, it if... depends on the mana that it depends you have to have a yes. certain amount you spend a certain amount of mana that's set on the card. Yeah. Um it triggers it the ability. Extra ability. It seems to match with the color of the spell itself. Yeah. Um Yeah. That seems to be the most one of it, but I'm thinking with the way that it is, is it specifically says, like, this combination of colors um, just adds an extra effect to it, if you use that. Right. So I don't know if there's any... I haven't looked through everything yet. I don't know if there's any in multicolor cards that are adamant. Uh, I haven't noticed any with what I was looking. It seems to all be very color-based, at least. Yeah, um, no, I just looked through the multicolor on the site, and no, uh, there doesn't seem to be any that are adamant that are multicolor. I'll throw the link up to the card, card image gallery if people want to look along. So, you But can they see. also they also have a lot of land in this one that have special abilities, too. Mm. They have, what is it, uh, 12 lands that have special abilities? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty decent amount. 
No, there's definitely some interesting things. And the one thing I was actually surprised that I did enjoy that they brought back was Righteousness. The white spell from uh, Unlimited that I think was originally rare, and now it's uncommon because it really should oh, be. Yeah. That's one mana, blocking creature gets plus seven, plus seven. Yeah, that's, that's I a... mean, yeah, I, I don't think it's... I mean, for one mana, that's awesome, but it's also a blocking creature. Yeah, so that's why I felt like always, you know... Yeah, uncommon the... makes a little more sense. They shifted that one of the reprints they had done, but I still like that they are bringing back and reprinting stuff occasionally, even with amongst all these new cards, and especially if they're drawing back to Unlimited, that's like... Cool. I, I, I like seeing that, at least, that they're not forgetting it. Like, it makes sense here for what they're trying to do. So, boom. Throw it out. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, like, I don't know if we've talked about the theme of this entire thing, but the theme is really cool. It's all about, like, storybooks and, like, various, uh, you know, actually, like, I guess fairy tales, Han Christian Andersen fairy tales, it has a lot of, with a little bit of that Arthurian myth, which is what they said it was, and it feels like a lot of that. You know, it, they definitely yeah. uh, capture that in a lot of things. Like Glass Casket. Magic Mirror. Um, uh, the green one that's basically Goldilocks, but she murders the three bears. I can't remember oh. the, the one that it is. That was the one that was like the, one of their initial ones they were showing off. Uh, Flaxen Intruder. <laughs> yep. That, that, it's an adventure that it creates three bear tokens. And whenever it deals combat damage to the player, you may sacrifice it if you do destroy target artifact enchantment. Uh, oh, yeah. it's kind of interesting. And so. that looks like a real badass, uh, <laughs> Goldilocks. Goldilocks. I know. <clears throat> Equipped with bloody sword and bear trap. Mm-hmm. And she looks like she's five. Mm -hmm. The gilded... giant opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a picture of magic beans in someone's hand. You sacrifice two food tokens. If you do, create a seven-seven giant creature token. Otherwise, create three food tokens. Yep. And it's for three mana. So for three mana, if you have two food tokens out already, you can get a seven-seven. Creature that's and very something like Gilded Goose, where it enters the battlefield, you create a food token, and for uh, and you can tap it to create food tokens very easily oh, yeah. with this rare and uncommon in your hand. Uh, turn three, you could have a seven seven giant, yeah. So that's it's it's, it's very hard to do. But, like, a lot of these things that sacrifice food are very interesting this way. Like, some of the trolls and stuff. And, and there's a lot of, like, other interesting ones. Um, oh, my God. The green henge is awesome, but also horrible at the same time. Oh, the great henge? Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's not horrible. Actually, no, it's just awesome. Because if you have a big creature out... the spell I read it wrong. The spell calls X less to cast, where X is the greatest the greatest power among the creatures you control. It's normally nine mana to cast. It's a artif legendary artifact that taps for two green mana and you gain, um, you gain two life. Hey, I had the 7-7 seven, seven, nine... okay. seven, seven giant out. Cost me yeah. two. Mm -hmm. And whenever you... Uh, whenever a non-creature token enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. Non-token creature. Your first yeah, death. it's a non-token. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but that's still awesome in a creature creature heavy deck. Mm -hmm. Especially that, like a big green stompy deck, which this does allow for it in some of the ways that you do it. Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised. Wait, wait, is that mythic? Yeah, that's mythic. So yeah, I was gonna say I thought it was just rare at first. Oh, that's mythic. So yeah, that makes definitely sense that it's mythic because that's super powerful. No. There's a lot of anno uh, very interesting uh, cards here that I I enjoy quite a lot. Just like looking at them and seeing them, they're very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they they kept up with a good theme and they did it quite well. I think is what uh, what I'm glad about. Especially because they were planning for this one to be a one-off set anyway. Like this is this is the L drain they're doing. They're going to move somewhere else the next set, which if you're going to do a one-off set for magic, I think this is the proper way to do it. It 
it tells the story they're going for, it shows off the mechanics they want, and it um, it doesn't feel like it couldn't fit in anywhere kind of things. Like, I feel like this is, it's got, it's got mechanics that, like, make me intrigued that maybe, like, you could revisit Eldraine at some point in time. I'm fine with them moving on from now, but definitely, um, it's definitely a very good uh, bit that they've done. I, yeah. I'm gonna have to, like, probably at some point in time really look through all the cards myself, uh, kind of get an idea of everything, but still. And, uh, oh god. Like, Castle, uh, Ardenvale? I don't know, like, I, I always used, uh, Keldon Outpost, but you had to sacrifice a, um, planes in order to play it. This is more expensive, but it does the exact same thing. It's, like, twice the cost, but it also creates tokens. And that was one of the reasons I used that. But, man, each of, each of them has, each of those castles has very interesting effects. Uh. Yeah. Nope. No, it's definitely an interesting set. Yeah, I can agree with that totally. Uh, man, I definitely would like to see. Uh, I don't know if I can say like see more of Aldrain, just because you know, as I said, like it, I think they did a pretty good job what they were doing. I would yeah. like to see like what people would think about it, you know. I like the idea of it. It seems interesting. They've done a lot of cool things. Uh, they've done things like we see... We've seen, like, some races that we haven't seen a lot of. Like, dwarfs are in this? Great. Dwarfs haven't seen a lot. I think there's at least one or two sets that have had dwarfs since Forgotten em Fallen Empires. Oh, yeah. You know, Kaladesh had dwarfs. But they were yeah. artificer dwarfs. They were very artifact-heavy. We didn't have any non-artifact heavy dwarfs for the longest time. Since Forgotten Empires. We're Fallen Empires, which is way back in the past. So seeing, you know... And it's like an interesting side of knights, goblins, merfolk, dwarves. We all see them being more powerful. Because I always like a good tribal. And I feel like those are the tribal that they're, they really actually push them here. And giants a little bit, I guess, too. Uh, yeah. We can't forget them. That they have a presence. Um, maybe fairies is the other one. And it was kind of interesting to see where they, how they come up with new types and how they've applied those new types in the past when I was, like, looking at them. Like, they have, like, the type noble now. So you have a noble creature and they have a place to put it. And, oh, I think there's elves here, too. Uh, they've got their tribal, the yeah, well, they got their tribal themes down very well and add to all the tribes that they have here. I think that's the way I wanted to put it. All the tribes they have, they've done well. Um, yeah. And, like, I feel like everything is very story-driven in a way. Like, I don't mean, like, it's supposed to be, like, fairy tale based or Arthurian legend. I mean, like, a lot of the spells and everything else they have, all the cards, are very flavor-rich. You know, the way yeah. that they put them together. And I think that's when Magic at its best. When they can add a lot of this flavor to what they put out there. That it makes it feel interesting to play it, even if it's like something that's like a common. So. No, uh, th th I really do like this uh, new release a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff in it. Yeah, definitely. So... Throwing out Drain is out now. Um, yeah, and I, um, if you want to experience it easily and not have to pay money, Magic, uh, Magic Arena. Or it should be at your local game stores if you do want to spend some money and actually buy something. Play it in real life, yeah. I definitely recommend checking it out for yourself. I don't think we're going to go into do too much detail about like certain cards because it's hard to in this set. I think is the best way of saying it. it it's kind of hard to like choose some cards that I'd be like yes these are the examples because a lot of them have a, a very interesting feeling to them regardless so you could always have yeah. seven dwarves in your deck 
Are you going to name them? I mean, there's actually the card, Seven Dwarfs. Where you're going to have seven up in... It, it literally says you can have seven in your deck. <laughs> and they get bonuses for every other seven dwarf. They're like rats, only dwarfs. Dwarf they, rats. They would be eight eights if you had all seven out. Or you could double them if you had played a blue-red and just had, like, oh, I just copy them. Up yours, everybody. <laughs> yeah. That sounds about like something I would do. Anyway. Up yours, everybody. Up yours, everybody. Thanks, Dr. I mean, wait, Dr. Nick. That's rude. <laughs> Which we will be talking about Simpsons later, so it's even better of a reference. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh. Why don't we move on, though? Because yes. we still have more to talk about and more to suffer through. Um, the less suffering, the Pathfinder character guide, Lost Omen character's guide. So Lost Omen seems to be their current storyline, I guess you could call it, um, where they're kind of setting up where Galerion is in uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So great. Uh, I, I've seen no problems with that at all. It's kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to have to get like one of the books to really get a lot of the details on it because, you know, I was discussing it more and it seems like they've, they're taking things in interesting directions. It's, as, we, as I think we've said, is like a lot of the adventures in D&D &D are self-contained. They don't often be like, all of these are affecting the world. They're all dealt right. with kind of thing. This, every one of the adventure paths is supposed to have actually happened. And many of them are very apocalyptic. So how many times has Galerion missed a bullet? A lot. I need to count. Exactly. Anyway, so the character guide, though, is interesting because it does add a lot more heritages, feats, uh, some new ancestries. It allows you to play as hobgoblins, leshies, and lizard folk. Um, I like Hobgoblins. I've played one before, so I'm glad to be able to see them again. Uh, lizard Folk are always neat. Uh, I've seen them played in 5th edition. And the Leshy are interesting enough that I definitely can see them. But I'm interested to see if they've changed Leshy around. Because Leshy used to be very small. Like, they were tiny. Are they changed it now that there's, like, a medium breed of Leshy? Because there were more than one type of Leshy, and only one of them were supposed to be playable. So... I don't even remember the less sheets. To be it, they were little plant people. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, adorable little plant people. There was like, oh my god, a, a billion different types of them that were introduced in the Bestiary 3 originally, and I think they came up with more of them in the various books. Um... Including ones that you could actually play, because they have, the best series always had those like rules of, like, if you want to play this as a character, this is what you can do. Which I don't know if they can do any mu anymore in the best series, because of the nature of how they broke down uh, heritages. Um, right. Which, you know, is our new word for races. Um, then they changed, like, they've got ten new ancestry, or no, ten new, wait, no, it's ancestries for race, heritages for sub-races or something. God, I'm going to have to get that right. So, yeah. Ancestries. Yeah, new ancestry feats. Yeah, that's a lot. And ten new archetypes for classes. Wow. And, and, and they, they focus on five of the most influential organizations, including the Pathfinder Society and a couple other ones that I don't know nothing about. <laughs> I know about Pathfinder Society. But that's because that was their bread and butter in first edition. Okay, I find one thing kind of weird. One thing? Well, um, I'm reading it down under the PDF. It <laughs> says, will be available for purchase approximately the 16th of October. Will it or won't it? <laughs> we always have to remember that Paizo is interesting because they always release their hardcover stuff before the PDFs. Right, but I just think it's funny. Approximately on the 16th. It's like... They're planning for the 16th, but they're planning for the 16th, but things could go wrong, so they're not giving an exact date. I know, I just think it's kind of funny. No, it is really funny. Oh, man. 
No, it's an interesting book. I feel like yeah, they... The hardcover is available now. I feel like they're focusing more on these five organizations. It feels like that's the point of it. That these are organizations that your character could either be a member of or fight against in various ways. And it helps... Like, the Pathfinder Society is the only one that I feel like... No one ever defines a Pathfinder Society very easily in any of the books. Or if they did, I don't know which one it is. Is in Previously. So having right. it in a book that they're, like, defining it more than just the basic information that they talk about in various places. Like, having it that it's a focus. Because I don't know if there was a... There could have been. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, comments or chat if you're... Uh, if you know of what book talked about organizations within Galerion, please do. Because I, for the life of me, can't remember one. I always thought they talked about it in passing in a lot of places, but never like, here's organizations that you should know about. Right. I don't know. Well, I <laughs> also want to know one other thing. Sure. What the hell are they fighting on the cover? It looks mm. like a dimension reindeer. Mm, mm. No, I, I'm... Mm. When to go? Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. It, it, it looks like Prancer took some. As, that is a Wendigo. <laughs> from Pathfinder. I recognized mm. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it looks like a like a Death Knight or something. Uh, that might just yeah, be an evil this... guy in armor that's totally there. Looks like them. an evil paladin, yeah. Mm hmm. Unless he's, like, working together because, like. And I feel bad for the lizard folk there. He is cold! Yeah! <laughs> I'm like, they're cold-blooded. I don't think he wants to be fighting in the snow. No! Especially since he has no clothing on. No! <laughs> For like some he... reason, he's completely naked. Other than Look, a shield, a sword, and a satchel. All of them should not be there. The wizard is not dressed appropriately. The guy in the plate mail? That has got to be really cold. Well, he unless... could be wearing... Pa Normally, oh, when that's you true. Wear, okay, like, yeah. Mail and stuff, you did wear gamb gambeson underneath. Mm -hmm. So that so could help a lot. Probably, he probably has insulation under there. He's probably the only one who should be fighting there. Mm. True. I guess if you had a padding and leathers underneath, that would keep you pretty warm, even though yeah, you're in I mean, metal armor. The l lizard folk is awfully the worst off. Yes. They're all stupid. Yes, but he's the worst off. I mean, the wizard, he, he, at least he's wearing clothes. Yeah, well, the, the armored guy, he could be evil but working with them for the greater law or order. Because he could yeah. be lawful evil. And, like, if a Wendigo threatening a community, even lawful evil warriors would be like, ah, threatening the communities I rule over? That's it. I don't think so. Yeah, I know. Demented reindeer. <laughs> It's a Wendigo. It's a horrible, I like... I know, but it's a, demented, it's a demented looking reindeer. They are a demented looking reindeer. I can't I can't it, deny that. It's okay. ridiculous. It's a feral elk with jagged teeth, shark emeralds, and humanoid legs. That, I, I don't think I've oh, ever actually fought one in a game, and they, that's why I didn't recognize they it. They are CR-17. There's a reason you haven't fought any of them. Because we rarely have been in a situation where we would fight a CR-17 creature. True. So, yes, Wendigo, <laughs> not something that we've had. I think this was a gut, someone was having a bad acid trip when they came up with it. No, the problem is, is that's actually kind of accurate to some of the Wendigo legends, because I was hearing about that. It's stupid. Yeah, the Wendigo is like a weird creature. I will second that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be like a people eating spirits. Spirit. Yeah. And oftentimes, like... I, I hate people eat, eating spirits. I know. Uh-huh. Uh, mm -hmm. And the idea of, like, its feet end in, like, burnt tips. Like, it goes into, like... It's, like, almost like the, the humanoid feet at the bottom have almost burnt off. Yeah. Kind of creepy. Yeah. But, anyway. Uh, yeah. That's the Wendigo that they're fighting. And... They are not in good shape. Sucks to be them. I mean, unless that night guy is supposed to be like a hobgoblin, 
but I can't tell because armor. Ne none of them are certainly a Leshy. The Leshy was smart enough to not even show up. Leshy's like... Either that or he's hiding up. behind the trees. Could be. I would think that the Leshy would just be like, this shit, I'm out. <laughs> just, I'm out of here. <laughs> when to go? Ice cold? Nah. This plant dude's getting backwards. Warm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think the lizard folk's not long for this world. Ah, uh, no. Well, are lizard spoke... Oh, sorry, lizard spoke. Lizard folk, are they supposed to be like a warm-blooded reptile? Because like, they could descend from something akin to some of the reptiles that were around dinosaurs that we know were more warm-blooded. Uh, He's still naked. Yes. Regardless, <laughs> regardless <laughs> if he is warm-blooded or not. Which is a weird argument in and of itself because he's a lizard. He's he still, still is naked. naked. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think that satchel is keeping him very warm. <laughs> no. Find some clothes if you're going to ice lizard folk. I know it's like against your like culture and religion, but if you're going somewhere cold, just put up with it and wear some damn pants. <laughs> I don't care if it's tropical out or a swamp. Then you don't need pants. I'm fine with that. But if you're going where it's cold, I don't want to feel like I'm cold just looking at you. <laughs> That's the problem I have. And Here's the question. Do they have nipples? No. They're reptiles. It's hard enough to tell them apart if you're not a lizard folk between genders. Yes. I'm sure they can tell each other apart perfectly fine. Humanoids listening, looking at them look and go, is that a male or a female? Well, I guess you're going to have to sext it. Well, their voice might give it away, too. <laughs> no, no, you have to go cro full crocodile hunter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we ever did that, and that's just a comedy thing. I know it's a com. It's probably most likely a comedy thing, but come on. Everyone knows it. Everyone mm -hmm. knows the reference. Yep. Oh, God. <sighs> when okay. to go? I think we've gone on long enough about the I, cover it's just ridiculous. i don't i don't know well I, I think we went on about lizard folk see that's why the cover was appropriate because we were talking about lizard folk which are in the book yes anyway and whoever the guy in the dark armor is has glowing eyes i thought he was probably pretty evil yeah he seems pretty evil but he well, seem... you wearing all black plate mail with spikes with spikes horns and you're carrying a freaking cat of nine, a metal cat of nine tails. Flail. It's a flail. Flail. Oh, it's a flail. They're yeah, and I, and and like you've got like a black cloak on. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're you're pretty evil. You know, <laughs> you could be lawful evil in helping out these nice adventurers fight a wen a, wit a wendigo, but still, pretty evil. Maybe you'll betray them when they're done. Or, you know, like leave them out in the uh, if they're wounded. You could be like, well, I'm not going to heal you then. You know, you can just die here and then I have to worry about paying you or something. Maybe that's why the lizard folk doesn't have to be clothing. Yes, maybe. Uh, Fine, we're going to a warm tropical place. Totally warm, totally tropical. Wink, wink. Anyway, we're yes. going to talk about something that um, has existed way too long. The last non-soul breaking thing? Yes, the last non-soul making thing in a way. I think it breaks our souls for a different reason because it's like, why? We remember our childhood when you were fine. Why have you continued? Why do you forsake us and continue on your quest? I, I can't believe it's still on TV. There was a new season starting last Sunday. And there's talk of another Simpsons movie. The movie was good. If they do another movie like the last one, I actually won't mind that. Right, I'm but I'm that. just saying, it's just like... I don't know how it still exists. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think I watched a new Simpsons episode in probably at least a decade. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I've been better than that, or, like, I've watched more of them in that. I think it's been, like, a couple of years since I tried. But even then, it was like, I couldn't commit to an episode when I tried watching it. 
it's like it's I just, just it's like I like if if it caught me, great. But so few times did it catch me. They've I, redone so many plots. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, sometimes they come up with new plots which are hits and misses, but the new plots are oftentimes related to stuff going on in the world and things like that. So, yeah. But that, that's the problem. It's been around so long, it's hard to keep it fresh. I agree. So, this is uh, Codenames Simpsons. Uh, I've never actually played Codenames. Codenames I know about. I, I know about it, I just never played it. Oh, why don't you talk for a second? Okay, it's finished up. Okay, someone's at the phone in the hall. So it's uh, um, 200 Springfield cards, mm -hmm. 40 key cards, 25 cover, one stand, and instructions. And it's about $25. Yeah, and for code names, it's two to eight. It's really four to eight players. They say co two to eight players on the uh, 2015 version, but really, like, uh, most people say, like, four players is the minimum you, you should really play with. Um, it's two rival spy mappers, no secret identities of 25 agents. Uh, teammates know the agents only by their code names. So it's a game where you compete to see who can make the contact with all of their agents first. So you need two of these spy masters to begin with. Uh, spy masters give one word clues that can point to multiple words on the board. Uh, their teammates try to guess the words the right color to avoid uh, those that belong to the opposite team. Everyone's voice being uh, avoids the assassin. That's probably a very simplified version of the rules, but the idea is like it's teams of spies and trying to identify each other. Um, and it's the exact same way. It's all their agents. You have you have you've spies in amongst Springfield. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, it it it's a Simpsons flavored code code names. Yeah, I don't think there's, like, huge differences. I'm curious as they, they really have. Again, they say two to eight players, but again, four is probably the community recommendation for this type of game. Um, and you're supposed to use uh, references using only one word's clues. So that's another interesting thing, is that maybe you're trying to, like, make Simpsons references with, like, very smart, small cues that could hit multiple characters. Right. Which I guess takes in a different direction than like the spy version of this, which I guess is trying to describe people more. I don't know. I'm curious as to yeah, how. Yeah, especially like... since you have a lot of places and stuff here, like the nuclear power plant, mm -hmm. the church. Yeah, or some objects sometimes too. Like I'm pretty sure, like if you look at some of the pictures, they're they're pictures of stuff, and so yeah. like it's really hard and like. Some characters show up more than once. Transformer car. Um, I remember the joke that ex it. Is, I remember the joke existed. I have no idea what the joke was. They were making fun of Transformers. I think at the time. Yeah. That's and all I can you say. Three-eyed fish. Yeah, three, a Blinky. I remember Blinky. its name. Thank you. I remember its name because that was. I think it was a power up in one of the video games or the arcade game, which I played a bunch of both the arcade game and some of the old video games. So. And you have everyone's favorite, Dr. Nick! Uh-huh. Well, you have 200 cards. So if yes. you're setting up a board that's 5x5, five five, you're only using 25 at a time. Yeah. So you gotta, at least it does give you a lot of variety. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, you also have Homer's headless torso... In underwear and a tie. There are so many references here. I know. With how many like, seasons it's been. I know, but it's just like, that's an odd thing. Yes, that is an odd thing. This is an accuracy. This and I remember the biker dude. I don't know if he actually has a name. Probably what his character's name is. I don't know either. Yeah. Man. I mean, there's Disco Stew. There's Disco Stew. Well, they're showing off a couple places here on yeah. the thing. You know, a lot of the stuff. So, I mean, is this a great use of the code names, The Simpsons? Probably not. But 
is it acceptable? They're probably doing it because the, because of the movie coming out too, and it's so, oh celebrating thirty years of uh, the Simpsons. So as this well. is thirtieth anniversary. Thirtieth anniversary. Is there coming a thirty seasons, or does this include the Tracy Ullman show stuff? It could be either. <sighs> Almost. I mean, I remember watching the Tracy Ullman show in the early '80s and seeing the Simpsons on it. I mean, the Simpsons aren't much younger than we are. Oh, they're on 31 seasons now. This was the 31st season that just started. God. Yeah, because I... I've, oh God, what year did... Let's see. What year did... Um... This? 89 was the first now, season. I want to see... Oh, the Tracy Old... When they first... <laughs> when... <coughs> Here. Oh, uh, eighty-seven. Okay, eighty-seven. I just so saw her. They're only six years younger than I am. Yep. Uh, yeah, four nice years to me. Eighty-seven. Wow. Yep. And then they got their full actual series in 89 to start out with. God, so, I, re I remember them on the Tracy Ullman show. They were so horribly drawn. Yes. Yes, they were. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Their faces, like, their faces were droopy. Yep. Jesus. Uh, I think that's back when Smithers was actually black. Yes. I think so, yeah. Um... And for whatever reason, they changed him. I think it was in the second season of The Simpsons. <clears throat> and they've at least got till season 32, apparently they've been renewed through. Oh my god. Oh man, God! Um, I I I do enjoy you know the disenchanted uh, disenchantment series that uh, Groening has done on uh, Netflix. Six hundred and sixty-three episodes. Anyway, that's yeah. <laughs> that's enough of. Let's let's take a step. Let's take a step back <laughs> to like going back to the code name side of things, yes. because maybe maybe we should talk along that lines. You know, um, yeah. so well, we all are th all things nerdy. Yeah. So yeah, thirty years makes sense. Thirty years since they've been on air. Um, great, excellent. That's a great reason to do some kind of celebration. Is code names the celebration they deserve? I don't know. I don't think it's a bad celebration, but I don't think it's like if you're celebrating thirty years, this is what I would look to to celebrate thirty years. That's the thing about it. It's like, mm -hmm. is it? bad for a celebration? No. Could there have been better? Yes, I think there could have been. But also look at who's producing it. USAopoly. I so know. So is it surprising that USAopoly is the one coming out with something on this? Oh no, no. They did It Clue and that was weird enough as it was. Yeah. So They, they are very much into um... Oh my God, I can't think of it. Uh, branding. Um, branding. Thank um, you. Yeah, uh, they do a lot of licensed stuff. They do a lot of licensed stuff. That's yeah, what they, I was trying to think. They, yeah, they're licensed. very much a licensing company. But I, what, what I'm gonna say is like they do seem like they combine sometimes things. Like they have like random dice of like it's going to be a code names one with The Simpsons. It's going to be a clue game with it. <laughs> But then they come I wonder out with... if there's a Simpsons clue. Hmm. Because that would make sense. Yes. Yes. There is a Simpsons clue detective game. But Hasbro did that one. Yeah. But I, I thought there was. And, and like, that would make sense, especially since they did the Who Shot Mr. Burns episode. Mm hmm. I'm like, I could see a, a clue game based around that.
So they probably were also trying to make sure they didn't duplicate, you know, a game that's already been out, too. And The Simpsons have a lot of different stuff that they have licensed over the years. And it seems like they work with Hasbro, USAopoly, when they do their Hasbro stuff. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, that's the clue probably was a joint thing with Hasbro. Hasbro. <clears throat> but sometimes they do stuff that are, like, unique things, too. Because we talked about, like... Like, there was at least one other It game that we talked about that was its own thing, and it was very interesting and unique. Or, like, um, other ones are, like, interesting, like, they're doing, they were doing the DuckTales Munchkin with, uh, Steve Jackson Games. But didn't they do the, oh, where the hell is it? It's not in their most recent, I'm trying to find it, I thought they did the Die Hard oh, Nakatomi Plaza one, too. Which was unique, they did! Which is a unique game, so I'm yeah. I'm surprised sometimes that they don't do enough of these like unique games, and they like fall back on deals with Hasbro or deals with uh, Steve Jackson games or like stuff that they already did. Like whoever has code names deals with those people. Yeah, but it's pr it's probably easier. You know, I'm I'm gonna say yes. I I hecka agree. That's probably easier. That's definitely true. That um, doing a codenames Simpsons is more easier than coming up with an original Simpsons game to theme it. Um, yeah. And if someone somewhere said, "Hey, I think we can do this," then maybe that's where it comes from. Like maybe there's someone that's working on code names that's like looking at or like working on some like looking at games and being like, "What can we license these two that would make sense?" Maybe yeah. they have someone like that. I don't know. It's um, it's kind of hard to say, unfortunately. Agreed. Yeah, but um, if you like Code Names, or if you're a big Simpsons fan, still Code Names Simpsons. Or both. Yeah, it's it's meant to be a family edition, so I'm guessing it's for younger audiences. I can't, I don't see here how old they're saying it would be. I haven't been. Watching. Uh, pricey. Don't know if they mentioned that. If they did not mention that. <clears throat> well, it's 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 coming soon, so maybe they don't have a, a twenty four ninety five. Yeah, that's what it is. Twenty four ninety five. Well, I was saying age range because they say it's oh, family friendly. Age range is eight plus. Oh, eight plus. You found that fifteen minute. Yep. Oh, great. Um, if you click on the. Code names the Simpsons in blue at the very top. Oh, where, where, yeah. Um, the purchasing page. Yep. Gotcha. Because uh -huh. code names games are quick too. So twenty five dollar game for because it's got two hundred cards. Uh, for you're using twenty five per game. Yeah, that's that's a lot of variety you could have in at least the characters you're using and the references you can make. So yeah. it's interesting enough. Um, I think you're getting a decent chunk of stuff for the twenty five. So again. It, it looks like a good game, especially if you're a fan of those two things and you want something a little different than your normal cold games, maybe this is for you. Or if you're a Simpsons fan and you want to help celebrate the 30th anniversary and you've been with them that long, I can still say that I am a fan of Simpsons, just not as much anymore. I just, you know, it's it's like talking about like how we really haven't seen the later seasons. Right. Because I don't think it's like we grew out of it, it's just it got old. And well, it, for, uh, for us, I think it got started getting repetitive. Well, it was like I was saying, like, when they were being recorded each week, and I was on our DVR and I was checking them out, when it was like, one in six episodes I could sit down and watch the full thing of and be, like, engrossed in. Whether or not it was, like, just a plot line I thought was stupid or, like, something that was repetitive, I don't know. But it was just harder to catch me as it used to be. I think that happens with a lot of TV as people grow out of it for various reasons. Um, right. There are always going to be diehard people or people that really can connect up with it for long periods of time, but there's also a lot of times that you can be uh, become disenfranchised with it just a little bit. So, And I think that was me for Simpsons. So I'm not against seeing more stuff from them, you know. Um, good on them that they've managed to keep it going. Good on them that the cast hasn't died yet. 
well, not the main cast, they probably will at some point in time. And I don't know if that'll even end the series. Yeah. Well, they, they've been really good with not continuing... Characters die, but I mean like the main. Once they die, I mean yeah, but I think I think if that happened, they would retire the show at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really keep it at that point. Ten years and the first one dies, then they're good. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) too much Simpsons. Period. Homer has a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And doesn't come back this time. Nope. So we have one final thing to talk about, and it's the most soul-crushing defeat that we could ever have faced, but we're facing it today for you. Behold the Feast of Legends. Why? I'm going to put this up on uh, the uh, thing before we can really talk about it. Other than the why and the suffering that you're already feeling. There doesn't need... To be Feast of Legends by Wendy's, an RPG by Wendy's. The fight against frozen beef. (laughs) The nation of Freshtovia. (laughs) In the realm of beef's keep. (laughs) That's shaped like a hamburger. Uh... With... Places such as the Top Bun Mountains and the Bottom Bun Mountains. Uh huh. Twin Cities of Carl. Lake John Silver. Mm hmm. Temple of Panda? I don't know. The there might Moth. be more references to, like, stuff in Wendy's history and advertisements than we ever would know about. Yeah. The Deep Freeze, Nation mm-hmm. of French Tovia, French Fry Forest, Roast Beach, and Creeping, Creeping Veil? Sure. Yeah. There yeah. That's the world. Uh-huh. So, just to get this out of the way, yes, it is a tabletop RPG made by Wendy's that's obviously advertising Wendy's. You're not going to get away from that. It is uh, 97 pages of PDF. Is this the same one I got that Lindsay had shared with me? 97 pages. I'm just wondering if it's the same one that uh, someone in my chat had shared with me. Uh... You need a bag of combo carrying. It is indeed. So yeah, 97 pages, 25, like around 25 of which are character creation, and then they go into GMing. Um, so they, so really it's just a small character creation section. Yeah. Um, you need a bag of combo carrying and a pigtail wig. Mm-hmm. Those are two items you can get. So there, oh there's... God, there... specialty <laughs> items. Lemonade, strawberry lemonade, and chicken nugget. They all heal you. The thing is, they had to have been... The thing is, okay. So, because video games probably take a lot longer to create, I'm fairly certain when KFC started creating their Colonel Sanders dating simulator, which is a real thing that's out now. Yes. Oh, am I... Min- reason, oh, I froze this up for a second there. I've minimized this accidentally when looking through stuff. Uh, which is um, some reason an- um, anime style. Because it's a dating simulator I, and dating... I know, but still. It's appropriate to the type of game they did. You see, like, none of those visual novels, not in anime style. So, Wendy is somewhere along the way with, like, well, we can't do a video game, because then we're copycatting. What's popular now? RPGs. RPG game. Which I think you I should mean, be wearing clamshell packaging as your armor. Mm-hmm. Or a fresh-baked bun. <laughs> I want fresh baked bun. And you can use a straw shot as your weapon. But now, um, getting onto the side, because, I mean, like, 
we're talking about this because this is tabletop. But I do have to say, of like the big three fast food places, your Burger Kings, your McDonald's, and your Wendy's, Wendy's is my preferred one, just because I like their chicken nuggets better. That's the only reason. I, you know. But. Oh, God. Wait, wait. What? I just have to say this. Mm hmm. So they're taking a page somewhat out of Steve Jackson. Okay. And you get special buffs if you're eating. If you're eating an item that matches your order, i.e., you're eating a baconator and your character <laughs> is Order of the Baconator. <laughs> You get an advantage on all attack rolls for the rolls for the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh huh. Anyway. You, uh, oh my god! And, and you lose stuff if you're eating from like other places. Like mm -hmm. if you're eating tacos, you get minus two to all arcana rolls for the day. Or fried chicken, you lose one defense for all the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is odd. <laughs> or snackies, you know, chips and stuff. Mm -hmm. Minus two modifier to all your grace rolls for the day. So it's a five stat system. Strength, intelligence, charm, arcana, grace. Um... <clears throat> uh huh. Apparently, like, you roll 44 for stats. Yeah, so they're pretty brutal stat-wise for 4d4s. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm, I'm sorry, I just continue scrolling, and I'm seeing, <laughs> like, a flaming spatula as a weapon. <laughs> See, you're going deeper into depths than this, and you really, really shouldn't. You're going into a, a layer of hell that you don't need to be bringing upon yourself unless we were actually going to try something out in this system. Because I think they have a sample adventure, and you know if they have a sample adventure, it has to go on the list. <laughs> you had to call it a sample adventure, didn't you? <laughs> Not on purpose, but now it's on purpose. <laughs> um, so Just for that, I'm making you part of the order of the baked potato. <laughs> Woo! Baked potato! Um, so it's a D20 system. Oh no, it's a D20 twice. Oh, no, it is a D20 system, and they have advantage, disadvantage, like uh, D&D is. So they probably have, like, they only have five stats, but they've taken a lot of influence from 5th edition. Um, they go over some very basic rules, your basic items that you have, other than the bag of combo carrying and the penny tail wig and stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm now seeing some of those items that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I've got the big fork. <laughs> It's a big fork. You mean the Great Fork? Or the Great Fork, sorry. <laughs> yes. I'm not actually on that page right now. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at something worse. <laughs> Under the order of the baked potato at level 5, you're fully loaded. It's time to load up on some... It's time to load someone up with all the fixins because they're fixin' to fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so it's just, if you... Oh, man. Oh, man, there, this is so advertisement-heavy. It, it really is. And the thing is, you can't deny that it is. It is no, like... No, it, it, it's one giant Wendy's advert. It really is. You know? And it really is... A... Oh, it's why you can't take it seriously, because they, they went... They... I think if you were to play this, you have to play it at Wendy's. Oh my god, or you at least have to be eating Wendy's. It's like, everybody bring oh, your you Wendy's. You definitely have to be eating Wendy's. If you eat anything else, you get penalty. <laughs> I think that's what you have to do. It's like, you have to play it, and it's like, if you get some Wendy's, that you'll eat on, like, if we're doing a stream, like, eat Wendy's on stream and gain bonuses for your character. <laughs> uh... 
you know, yes. this might have to go in on the list of whenever we get this other Sunday thing. That's what I'm saying. We got to do it. It's so stupid. We got to do it. It's so bad. I got to do it at some point. Not. I got to run it. But it you is... know, it has to be. A, you have to run it as a silly game. Oh, God, it's got to be silly. You can't take this crap seriously. I'm sorry. They, they went too far to have you take it ever truly serious. I, 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 and I, I think everyone has to be has to start with a pigtailed wig. <laughs> there are levels I think that you can take for less for more seriousness in a game like this, but there it's like those levels that you have to like. Okay, there, there's really t yes you can, but there's really two basic options to do. Mm -hmm. You either try to make it like an uber serious game because it's just going to be more ridiculous. Yeah, or you just play into the silliness. Which that's why I wanted to I want to see what their test adventure is towards the back of their uh, book. Let me try to find that actually where that um, adventure is. I can tell you where it is. Give me two seconds because I was already in it earlier. I think it's starting at page like twenty nine. Uh oh yeah 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 the rise from the deep freeze yeah, yeah is their adventure that they got here which takes up like <coughs> the majority of the book yeah. So they just gave so it's really simple rules, and then like here's a whole bunch of stuff that you can play through. But I'm curious so as to like look through it and like see. I want to fight the, the beast bandit. <laughs> Where is that at? He's a, he, he's a, he's on page fifty six, next to Freista. The beef bandit. Yep. <laughs> He's gonna steal your beef, man. Slap in the face. Oh, so clumsy. <laughs> That's my cue. So salty. They have really and silly names for powers. Also, there's fishing poles in the game. And apparently there's actually a place to, you know, there's places to use them. Because I, I, I think they also own Long John Silvers, apparently. Uh, or they did at some point because oh. there's mentions to Long John Silver's in here. I want to look that up now. Um, uh huh. It's 80% franchise owned, uh, formerly division of Yum Brands Incorporated. Uh, announce uh, LJS Partners, LLC. Well, let's see here. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, I, I they lost because there's Long John, John Silver's week. Oh, they lost, so they had it at one point. Oh, that's why they used to have the uh, like the Long John Silver's Taco Bell combinations, right? Because it used to be with uh, currently the Yum Brands is KFC, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Wing Street, and it had been Long John Silver. So maybe the company the maybe Wendy's bought them out. Well, the LJ or the yeah, LJS Partners LLC are the ones that now have Long John Silver. So they say it's eighty percent. Um, Hold on here, let's see. Former Long John Silver is being demolished to make way for for new Wendy's. They bought the name out and they're getting rid of Long John's. Um. Well, that was just that was something that I saw pop up there. I don't think that I don't know if that was fully what. Everything was about for it. Was the this thing. is July twenty second, twenty nineteen. Well, let's see it. Well, that's just destroying one store. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's... you're right. You're right. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, that's the thing. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. There has to be some connection because even there's Long John Silver Lake in here. Mm hmm. And that's the thing. Um. So that's the pending sale of Long John Partners, a group consisting of franchise franchisees and other private investors. Oh, because eighty percent of it, it eighty percent of it is franchisees. 
a 80% of Long John Silver's are now franchise brands, meaning, you know, they're just pro- they're owner, private owners that buy the franchise and rent the franchise. Right. Right? Well, the uh, LJS Partners LLC is a group that is mostly franchisees and private investors. What if a large, por- what if they're the ones that are behind this more and a large portion of them are part of Wendy's franchises too? Oh, uh, Maybe. We don't know a lot about it, but it does make sense that there might be a connection now because that's the only subsidiary that is mentioned. But I'm going to look into Wendy's now. Yeah, because, like I said, in the map, there's Long John Silver Lake. Yeah. Or Um, Lake John Silver, which... It might be just referencing it. But then why the whole why the whole thing with the fishing poles and stuff too? I don't know. Because Wendy's don't doesn't sell fish. And Wendy's is now its own company though too is the problem. The Wendy's company. That's what I'm saying. Maybe they had a connection in the past. Maybe they did. Hmm. They could be. Um <clears throat> Because that's the only reason I could think of, like, the whole fishing poles being a big thing in this. Because you have the basic, advanced, and master poles. Mm-hmm. And you ca- uh, catch successful on a on a twenty of a roll, uh, a d twenty on a roll of ten or higher, thirteen or higher, or sixteen or higher. Going down, obviously. I don't know. It's confusing at this point in time as I'm trying to like look into the history of this as to why it might even be connected together. Because yes, if there's references, I don't know where where are the there could be such subtle things. You know, there's subtle things, and like as you said, the lake name isn't like a full thing of it. So it's it just seems there'd be it seems odd if they're going to make references. Well, or references that they were making a reference that... Oh... Maybe they're referencing other places, too, because I thought about here. Where would you get... Where would the name Carl come from? Because it was always... Oh, Carl Jr.'s. Yes. Um, And maybe Panda would be referencing something like... Panda Express. Panda Express, yeah. Okay, so yeah, maybe they are... Maybe they are um, mentioning other places then. Sort of, you know, like kind of referencing them a little in, bit. Like a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. Yeah. Um, something that something that you could pass off that it's not the same thing, but maybe it is referencing them a little bit. Um, that could definitely be a reason behind a bunch of it, so... It could be just tongue in cheek. Yeah. Okay. That makes. I was just like, this is weird. <laughs> so, that... so to maximize your buffs, you should eat a cheeseburger item, a chicken item, a frosty, French fries, a, some kind of beverage, and a Wendy's salad. Mm-hmm. Because then you would get plus one to strength, arcana, charm, intelligence, grace, and defense. And it says these buffs yep. do stack. <clears throat> Look, I'm not gonna eat all that. I do love that the Feast of Legend website has an order Wendy's button at the top, though. They really yes. are like, you should get some Wendy's to play this game with. <laughs> oh my Use god! Wendy, order Wendy's and roll the dice. It's just a dice roller. Yeah. Not even a great dice roller. Ooh, I got a 15. I got a seven. I got a 20. I got an eight. I got a 16. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just like, oh, it's a random number generator and has pictures of a knife. Yeah, no. Uh, this is, it's interesting. And again, we'll have to put it on the list of like, sure, we'll play through this. <laughs> sure, we'll, we'll go into this. That seems great. Oh, God. <laughs> I also love it does say on the advertising page, too. In Feast of Legends, your characters will gain special advantages if you're eating the right food in real life. <laughs> oh, they really say that. Oh, God. Yep. So, 
That's, that's definitely what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to be like, well, if you want some bonuses, you can totally br grab some Wendy's and bring it along. GM gets bonuses if he eats Wendy's. I'll have like a bag and be like, haha, I'm going to eat a fr some fries to defeat you. Oh, no. <laughs> these monsters! I'm gonna eat fries and give these monsters advantages. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna carry around some Taco Bell and stuff and fe force feed it to your monsters. It'll debuff them. My monsters aren't from Wendy's or Wendy uh, Fresh Tovia, so they're immune to it. Meh, 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 meh. They're evil. Like, I'm gonna sh shove some fried chicken down their throat to give them minus one defense. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. So, why don't we move away from this <laughs> adventure we've been on, uh, for now? And... We've gone insane now. Yes, we've had enough of Feast of Legend. Feast of Legend. You have to say it like that. Um, Kickstarter corner. Yeah, I got one. I don't have one. I, 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 I misread this one at first, and I thought it was something different, but it's still interesting, so I'll go with it. Yeah, sounds good. I got Mob Sitters. I thought it said Mob Settlers. Hmm. Which I was like, that would be interesting. Mob Settlers. Like, Settlers of Catan, but Mob? Nope, nope. You're a babysitter. For the mob. Well... Mob sitters, you take the role of a babysitter working for the mob. Just because crime pays the bi um, the bills doesn't mean these mobsters don't have families. You're no ordinary babysitter, though. Otherwise, you wouldn't be mixed up with the mob. You've got plans on your own, whether it's stealing from your boss, ratting out your rivals to the cops, or actually just get some innocent babysitting. Uh, there's money to be made here. So, yeah, you're a mob guy who does babysitting. Great. I guess you <laughs> also use the opportunity, like, when you're stealing from the mob or ratting your friends out that you're, like, you're babysitting and they're away, so you're going through their house. Um, you can, like, steal the boss's golf buggy. Hmm. Uh, but it's a card game. We is at 3,064 out of a goal of 4,933. It has 75 backers. So it's very close to its goal, and there's still 25 days to go. It's 3 to 8 players, 8 plus, 20 to 30 minutes. And they also have an expansion they're working on, too. Ooh. Called the Heavy Mob Deck, an expansion for uh, set for mob sitters. So I just wanted to give a brief mention. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, sounds interesting. And it's apparently British because I'm looking as I scroll down to the page. <clears throat> it's uh, saying about pledge levels in pounds. So they have three pledge levels. They have a baby. Which is a pound plus. You won't support. Uh, you wanted to support the project, but simply want to receive updates and progress to the campaign. Pledge a pound. Babysitter, you get a co uh, for twenty-two pounds. You get a copy of the base game and all stretch goals. And then you have mobster level, which you get a copy of the base game, the heavy mob deck, and all stretch goals. Hmm. And I'm seeing if they mention. And I'm not seeing anything on... Oh, but it is one of the ones where you do have to pay extra for shipping, it looks like. So, there is that, too. Because I know we, when we talked to... Uh, what's his name last week? It might not uh, include shipping. Our guest last week that... You know, that's something they you really want to consider when you do this. Is if you're adding shipping on top of your pledge, that can detract people. So, 
So for shipping to the U.S., it's eight, an eight extra pounds. Which I don't know the conversion off the top of my head, but probably like twelve dollars, I would say, or so. Cool. Uh, yeah. And as I said, I don't have one right now, so that's right. best I can say. <clears throat> um, why don't we go to our weekend tabletop? So, okay. what did we do last Saturday? Last Saturday, I, I you did not come up. You weren't feeling well. That's right. I don't think I did much. I think I rested. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday we did High Noon Saloon. Yes, because we did I, High Noon Saloon. Yes. And I, Lynn's won. Yes, that's right. Because someone wanted to pick on me the entire time. Wasn't me. I got murdered I very quickly. You. No, you're the first to die. Blaze was the second. Followed closely by me being third and um, Lee being fourth. Who, for some unexplained reason, decided to attack me the entire game even though I only attacked him once and that was later in the game after he had attacked me like a few times hey, look look he had ideas and I don't understand them but that's fine uh, you know it's fine I'm not bitter on it I'm just saying it's just like you might you need to spread the love a little the destructive love of killing your fellow man yes or woman mm-hmm but, good time. No, it was still a good time. Um, you had at least one of your other games this week, right? Yes, I think we had. Did we have two? I think you had Kane. I had Legacies of Kane and had Madness. Legacies of Kane. Um, they I tried to do phase two of their plan to steal a gorilla, which is now that they've had an initial break in and learned some things. They're like the next night. They're like. Well, let's break in and see if we can find information. Because the first time was seeing, like, where security offices were and stuff. So they were getting... Worm's character was going to break in to get information. And then uh, Carpe and Jess's characters were going to break in in a separate area to create a distraction. So they managed to break in. And they began doing a B and e Very loudly and obviously. Because, like... They, they were like, we're going to steal stuff from the drawers. And I'm like, it's the middle of the night. You can find like a hundred bucks in there because the drawer's been reset. And they did it by like picking up the cash registers and smashing them down on the ground. <laughs> I'm like, that is very loud and people have heard you. Yeah. Already when people were on guard because someone thought they saw something at one of the entrances with them, they did try their best. But when they like horribly failed their stealth, even with an illusion, someone sort of saw something. And then uh, Worm failed stealth completely, so he got ambushed by a guard who hurt him. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when there's already a number of guards had run off to deal with the problem, while a number stayed back in the aquarium to like... Because apparently it's the security office of the aquarium, which might not be the only security office, it's the only one we knew about. And so he got in a fight with two people and was having trouble, while the rest the other two got in a fight with five guards. And in the middle of the, of the fight, you could hear police sirens coming in. Oh boy. And so one of the people ran off to go get the cops. And. Fun! Mm hmm. Granted, I think um, Carpe is trying to keep up with him, but it's a lot of noise, and they're not far from where the cops are. So the cops could probably get there pretty easily. And so things are going awful on both ends. So we'll see how well it goes. Oh. That sounds horribly hilarious. It's It hasn't completely fell apart yet. Yet. And then we had Madison Land, which unfortunately I'd say was an okay session. Like, the session itself went decently. But it's... He made some stupid choices. Well, it's... One person made a stupid choice. Yes and no. And I think it's like, I didn't establish enough information and there were some problems that were established which we discussed with you know like 
probably there should have been less of a language barrier by now, especially if it's important. You know, yeah. and that created a lot of problems. Uh, there was information you probably could have gathered at previous locations. Like, you could have used your disguises and infiltrated a village and found some stuff out before you just ran to the main place you were going to. If you spoke some of the language. Like, I think it makes sense because of the new connection with uh, the Dark God that um, Funny One's character, Zack has, that maybe he can speak the language now. You know, that yeah. makes sense. It, it makes perfect sense. And like, Maybe you and Grits have picked up a little bit. You because of like what you did with your go with goblin enemies, and Grits because she's just had a lot more experience than the rest of you. I can see you guys getting by with a smattering of the language, something like yeah, that. Yeah, enough to maybe you know brokenly speak it. Yeah, it won't be great, but like you know, you could make a deception check and actually attempt to be like trickily tricky. It won't right. might not go well, but you have that chance. You know. Um, we all have horrible accents. It, yeah, but it's like I, I I wasn't even thinking about that, and then like it's the information set up like as unfunny one was reviewing it was obvious that there was a lot of misunderstanding on your character's ends, and I'm gonna have to come up with like a fact sheet that I can send to you guys that is what stuff you should have learned and what it and, and it's up to you then to interpret it after that. But I feel like. A funny one said it best is that to it's like what Shakespeare said is repeat stuff because assume right. everybody's an idiot and people can just be stupid even if they're not stupid people so it's very easy just to like be like oh I missed that yeah and now I, I, I think if we would have had opportunity decide if on off time possible off time to at least really study the language a bit yeah. That would have put us in a lot better place. So there was um, things that I could have done better that I missed. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's also partly our fault. We probably should have also asked, hey, is there any chance that we could actually, like, study any of this language? Yeah. Well, it's like you guys were breaking to a place where, like, oh, my God, this is heavily fortified. And, like, I'm trying to imply, like, oh... A lot of them are out on military maneuvers. That's the group you saw and ran into, you know? Yeah, and that's what I was saying in chat. I'm like, when, when you said that the king was out on mil military maneuvers with his generals, I'm like, that's probably the army that we saw. Which, so this which a funny one didn't pick up on that. Actually, I noticed that he didn't know that the king wasn't there. But yeah, and I'm like, no, the king's not here, so... You crap. can change from assassination to another plan. Like... Remember, you were like, well, the prince might be well. Well, maybe then you could try to get a meeting with the prince and try to convince him to overthrow his father or something. Which maybe would probably go better than attacking an army. <laughs> the king has, like, a special royal guard that is, like, you're technically not supposed to actually fight until, like, the fifth adventure in the original one. Yeah. They're that supposed to be that elite. It's I, like, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, the king is not... In a warrior people, the king doesn't get there because he's a slouch anyway. Yeah. No, you know. God, no. He probably has killed his way to the top, or his family has killed their way to the top. Yeah, his his family has been in charge because of blood, but they maintain it through force, basically. It's like, it's you, you might have your blood which puts you there in the first place, but unless you have the strength of arms to maintain that you were going to lose out to maybe, like, a branch family or something. Because they aren't the only ones descended from those original uh, princes that left the uh, Kaladite city. Right. But So, there's more to, to figure out, and as I said, I've got some ideas that I'm going to try to fix where we left off, and I thought we had an interesting discussion with the entire power that Tiv had at the end there, where I think Unfunny One would allow the... the which is really hard to describe. Unfunny one would allow this illusion to have a force effect because of the force effect on the person's mind. Right. How, I, I, and I, I understood where he was coming from. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But, like, I think I'm going to go with my interpretation as I've read it, which is less that, like, if it has an effect on someone, it's tricking them into thinking they've taken damage, and it's psychic damage. Right. And damage does not equal force. 
that's like being in lava or being on fire or someone strikes you with a sword, your mind will pretend, oh, it's scratched into me, that's why I took damage, you know? Right. But if you're just interacting with it, you can't interact with it. It's not there. Like, someone gave a good example when I was Googling it online that it was like, if you create chains with the illusion, the person will struggle against the changes and they will break out right away. But the thing is, their mind will tell them, I broke out of the chains. Right. Oh, it, I must have been strong enough. Or like, oh, I slipped my bonds pretty easily there. They weren't on me that tough. I thought they were tough. You know, your mind right. excuses it. That's why, like, if you fall off a bridge that's not there, your mind excuses it. There's no force. You are the force doing it. Right. But you're doing it willingly. And that's why I feel like the interpretation on Un Funny One is doing is not a willing force. Like, yeah, no, I, 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 I totally understand. Like I said, I, I, I can get both points of view. Yeah, I mean, which I can get his point of view too. It's just like, I, I think that you know, there's a really great uses for that spell. What? That's just not one of them. That's not just one of them. Like, I could call. You could have made up... an illusionary attack behind him, like maybe some, like an alarm behind him, or someone, you know, attacking behind him. Mm -hmm. And he goes to investigate that instead because that's more of a threat. There's a lot of things that... He, and it's a distraction, too. There's a lot of ways he could have gone about it. Like, he could have probably layered an illusion over top what was going on with him. That maybe yeah. he would have double-taked and, like, oh. He's like, actually he actually had uh, cuffs on him the entire time. Yeah, because it's a personal illusion. He's it's like, like, oh, I must have misseen that. Yeah, and that would have been perfectly fine. It's like, the, the creativity with that one is actually really great and it's very interesting and it's really a great spell for illusioning one person but I understand where he was going with it he wanted to shove him inside and create a problem but yeah I think it would have been better to it would have made it, it just look like there wasn't a problem to investigate and what 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 Tiv wanted to do would have probably created more of a problem anyway right. because he probably would have yelled out the door alerting more people. Yes, and already the people in the towers have been hearing things, and they haven't heard enough. Maybe they've heard enough to be suspicious or not. You're not sure. Right. But I made a lot of perception checks. Every round I was making perception checks, and it's how much of it could they pass off as, oh, they're just tormenting someone or something like that. Right. No, I, I, I was totally worried about that, and his idea, I'm like, mm, the door still would be open, he could still yell. Yeah. That probably isn't the best use. And and I'm removing the rage ability as I have it on the Kalida because it's totally unbalanced. And I have to figure out something different to balance them out. I'll and... figure out something. <laughs> well, it... Yeah, that has been really cold. With it has... One down. It has been more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Definitely. And it required experimentation to kind of figure out what that was. Yeah. Well, no, and nothing's going to be perfect right off the bat. We all we all know that. And the thing is, it's the difference between Pathfinder and Rage and Fifth Edition and Rage. Pathfinder yeah. and Rage is just some stat bonuses and maybe some extra hit point. It's extra attack and damage and hit points. That's what you get. It would have just been plus like four to strength, plus four to. I think it may have been plus two, plus two strength, plus two constitution, or plus four, plus four. I don't remember which. Which is yeah. very good, but that's an entirely different thing. If it's only five hit point, hit five hit dice, the thing is anyway, that's ten hit points, which is still less than half of its hit points. Much yeah. less. So well, it's. And the problem with us is too, we don't have. We have some partial spellcasters. But no, yeah. nothing like a wizard or a sorcerer. I, it's one of those things that when I initially put it in, I wasn't as familiar with as I am now. And I never right. thought to change it, which is that resistance is a very powerful tool. Right. And, like, it, it, economy that way is a very powerful tool. Because not even magic gets through resistance, which makes it difficult. Yeah. Not even, like, in the resistance they I mean, had. I mean, like, plus one, you know, or something. Yeah, like, the resistance they had made it much more difficult to go through their stuff. So, yeah, I will probably come up with a replacement some point, but for now I'm just going to pull it completely and just be like... And, and, yes, it will maybe change things a little around how things work with Ulfgar and his spell. You know, I can keep it a little bit the same that they, like, kind of lose a bit of control... 
once you, like, ooh, that is their madness. That they're still angry. They have a rage to them. But if it's not, like, a big stat thing, or it's not, like, completely losing control, I don't know how I'm going to play it with there. And I'm right. going to try to rebalance things around with their abilities around them having, like, a permanent angry madness. And I maybe figure out some kind of bonus that they could have for when they get forced into it or something. I don't know. I'm not going to go there yet. But Right. But we'll work on it. We'll fix it. Hopefully. You know, that's yeah. the plan. Um, it, it takes a little time sometimes to realize something. Well, again, like, I think it really reflected on this last encounter. The last two encounters. The last one... Well, we haven't really fought them in quite some time. And the last time you fought them, they were like, they're hunters and stuff, which have very few hit dice in comparison. They're right. like, they're they're actually like the general meat and bones of their citizens. Have uh, They're like closer to a bugbear that they have like a decent number of hit dice and are mean. That's actually the where I kind of worked off of is I made them something akin to a bugbear, which is like a CR1 base race, you know? Right. So as soon as you start adding stuff to them... They become meaner. Very quickly. And that's how it goes with the Kalida. You know, their soldiers are more than their... Are, are, the, at least the ones you've encountered now are their, are more elites. They're not their basic citizens, which are mean. Right. Granted, you've encountered most of their citizen army, which probably exists. It's just this is the first time you're encountering their elite army, which is like their... You don't know how many they have. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a different beast altogether. Yeah. So, it'll it'll be interesting how we can kind of, you know, we had a good discussion about it. We're going to try to rein some things back and fix some things up, um, you know. We can easily get by that maybe, like, because it was you and Grits that weren't really speaking that kind of just makes sense that maybe you just weren't trying to like get into a conversation just because you didn't feel like you should because you can only speak a little bit right well we grits and Ulfgar but Ulfgar's a prisoner well Ulfgar I don't think he's the only one I can't I can't like excuse knowing a little bit of it and Signy right. too but also Signy. he's <laughs> he, he's also a prisoner right now so it's like he probably wouldn't be talking mm -hmm. so, so that makes sense yeah and like Signy at least would have been able to comprehend them. That's the only thing that I could give him for her. Well, no, she replaced that right now. Someone else has the helm, doesn't that? Don't they? I have. Um, no, I have the hat. She still has the helm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right, because she can disguise herself. I keep keep forgetting that she can disguise herself. Yeah. But no, giving giving Zach just free reign and allowing at least another person to have tongues cast on them would help a lot. Would have helped a lot that there could have been two people talking because then you could have backed each other up too. And that's something that makes a huge difference rather than just one person can do it all because of a spell. Right. But So, we should be returning next week. Uh, a couple little changes. It should be the same exact point in the storyline and I'll just, you know, figure it out and we'll kind of take our turn as we need to with things. I, still, that the assassination of the king was something that when I was like, when Zach, when Zach was saying that, I was like, Really? That's that's the leap you're going to? <laughs> Regicide? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can sure as shit yeah. try. <laughs> you know? I wasn't going to say, no, you can't commit regicide if you don't want to. <laughs> I remember fighting the king in the evil campaign we did in Pathfinder. That king was mean. He was a warrior king. He was like, you know... A billion levels higher than we needed to fight. It's the same thing. Tough kings. Right. Anyway. Uh, was, uh, I, I throw talk it out, but Nightbot hasn't been working, so I haven't been replaced it. And I still haven't figured out how to fix Nightbot. So I don't have the current docket in do chat. Uh, which I think after that is our... We did our Kickstarter corner. We did our Week in Tabletop. Um... We don't have a deeper discussion this week because we haven't gotten any reviews. We might not get any review copies or anything until after um, PAX. PAX Unplugged, yeah. So that'll be then when we get some more reviews in. And uh, ask the table. So if you have any questions for us at any time, you can check us out at our Twitch uh, down below us there. You can also message us at... Uh, you can message us at us at Twi uh, Twitch. You can be here... I mean, Twitter. 
You can be here on Twitch and throw it out in the, the, the chat. You can be in the comments of the YouTube channel. You could go on my Discord and ask it one of the Discord uh, uh, channels or message me directly on Discord if you join the Discord channel. Link down below. Um, I think, Joe, you're a member of my Discord channel, so you can also link to him through there and you can direct message people that way. Um, yes. Which we're willing to take direct messages. If we can answer our question, your questions right then and there, we will. If it's a question that seems appropriate to talking on here, bring it on here to talk about. Um, there have been a few questions that are very long-winded questions I've had, but the problem is, is like they're very in-depth about a topic, so I don't think they're appropriate here. <laughs> Unless it's a really slow news week. We have yet to have this slow enough news week that we've really needed it. Yet? Usually I can find at least four topics. <laughs> and I feel like if we have four topics, we usually make do. One right, of these weeks, I'm just saying. Yeah, one of these weeks, maybe it will be like, uh, we could talk about this board game. It seems interesting. Right. Anyway, uh, so thanks again, Joe, for joining me as usual. Yep. Um, of course. Yeah, we'll both be back for Sunday's Tabletop, theoretically. Yes. Yeah, and then if you're looking for RPGs, it should be um, uh, Madison Land Legacies of Kane are on schedule for Tuesday. If I need to be canceled out, I will let you people know in Discord and Twitter. Madison Land should be on schedule for next Thursday. Um, Man um, uh, Records is at 10 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. EST Tuesday. Legacies is 2 p.m. EST Tuesday. Madness is 9 p.m. EST Thursday. Um, that should be the basics for my current schedule. Uh, we should be back next week. We might have a guest either next week or the week after that. I was talking to someone. I have to see if they still are free or something. I haven't messaged them in like a week or two because we were talking about this time frame. So we'll see. Might have a guest. Um, other than that, remember to check out all the links below. Uh, my Discord, my Twitter, my YouTube channel. This will go up on it. Uh, check out the Twitch channel. Check out this ch Twitch channel live if you haven't, if you're watching this on YouTube. And of course, uh, yeah, that's it. And there's also uh, the Patreon if you want to show some extra support. Or if you're on the Twitter, Twitch side, hey, sub, it's also extra support. And that gets you, both ways get you some things. Whether you like emotes or you like some Patreon stuff. Your choice. I don't care. Support. I love it. Thank you. Bye, folks, everybody. God. Bye. That was not English. <laughs>